Hey, good day. I'm Crocodile Board Game Boy, and you're listening to the Board Game Mechanics. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not really an intro. We, I don't think we have one this week, so... Oh, well, whatever. I guess we're back to amateur status. Yeah. Uh, got, sent, got sent to the minor leagues. Well, <laughs> That's whatever. True. It happens, I guess. Uh, I, I, I guess if you're brand new to us, I'm sorry. That was a terrible way to start a relationship with you. Um, I am Joel, and with me, as always... Is none other than... Hey guys, what's going on? It is Jason. And together, we put our two locking rings together and we form the <laughs> the board game mechanics. The Planeteers. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Uh. Something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, boy, this is going to be fun to record because I am just... Man, I don't know if you guys... like. I don't know if you guys could pick up on it last week, ep- last week ep- episode or not, but... This week's episode, I've learned how to not talk correctly, apparently, uh, based on the uh, Porky Pig thing I was just doing. <laughs> but uh, last week, I, Jason and I both found out our shared grandma died. So uh, we were really, really sad. And you can tell it's a dead grandma show last episode. So that's not true. But And if your grandma just died, I'm really sorry I made that really terrible joke. Um, but it was a very somber, somber, somber so, show for some reason. So, And then for some reason, like that's the episode that we got like... 500 listens on so <laughs> yeah it was crazy <laughs> uh, yeah weird so anyway uh hopefully we're a little goofier this time but not, not mm, i don't know i hope it's not dairy products goofy so um anyway uh i guess that's about it tonight today we're talking about uh what we played uh, a little bit of some news and then our favorite publishers which is one that i don't think we've done yet so and if we have we don't remember so it'll be cool to see how we changed our favorite publishers um because I'm pretty flaky and flighty, and I probably would have a year ago said, oh, man, I'm all about those yellow games, all about those uh, TMG games, and all about those, I don't know, uh, party games. Partygames.com, the party game company. <laughs> I don't know. Hasbro. Yeah. Ha- oh, Hasbro, and then uh, Milton Bradley, and... Uh, <laughs> Parker Brothers. <laughs> Spin Masters. Uh, so we're going to talk about our favorite our favorites, though. Uh, but I guess... We'll roll a bumper now and get into some news next. Okay, so I found um, a few interesting things on Kickstarter that I wanted to mention. And one is a reprint from designer Alban Viard. And this game is called Clinic. It's the second printing. Uh, A lot of his games are, they'll come out, they'll be like 100 or 1,000 or some really small number. And then they're impossible to find. This is one of those where it came out. There was a it was a small production run, and it just ceased to exist. But it's on Kickstarter now, deluxe edition, art from Ian O'Toole because he's doing art for everybody. And what this game is essentially is you're doing like uh, you're doing some building with pieces on grids because that's how he likes to roll. But you're also trying to make sure that your hospital is running more efficiently than everybody else. It seems like a pretty heavy and heady game right up my alley. And for the price point at fifty nine dollars. It's really tempting. So if you like Album VR's other games like Small um, Small Cities, um, he has Mega City, I think, is another one of his. If you're into his games, maybe go check this one out and back it if you so choose. Cool. I know nothing about that. So I'll say this. Huh. Sounds cool. I think that's what I do when I don't know anything. <laughs> All right. I'll keep that in mind when I hear that later. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, the next game is... I think it's going to be finishing off this series of games, and it's called Hostage Negotiator Career. So ah. this is a solo game. They've had tons of expansions for a long time. And this is essentially going to turn it into a campaign mode over a series of 10 years. I don't really know much about this game. I know that it's pretty popular for what it is, and I've been wanting to try it because I like solo games. But this is going to turn that fun game into a cool campaign because that's all the rage. And it's on Kickstarter now. You can get it for 40 bucks, and it has seven days to go at the time of this recording. So if you're interested, go check it out. Is this one standalone? Because I know some of the expansions for this, I think you can play as a standalone game. I didn't know if this was the case on this or if I'm just throwing like you some information to put you on the spot here. No, I read that, and it said this game will work if you have all the rest of – or at least some of the other stuff. So it looks like you need to have the other stuff to go with it. Gotcha. Uh, I, I do think this looks really cool. Um I don't know if this is one that I want to play the app version of or if it just it looks cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely would try that. I didn't know there was an app, so maybe that's the way I can go to see if I enjoy it. I, 
I, it's wishful thinking, I think. Oh, I got gotcha, you. I, I, gotcha. think, I think I want an app. I don't know that there is one. <laughs> it could be an app. I mean, it seems like a kind of an app style game. And there might be an app. <laughs> you know what's you know what's really you know what's really fun about this is like I think sometimes people listen to this show because they like are like, I wonder what's going on with board games and these guys know what's going on with board games. And we don't at all. Like really well you do. I, I just I don't at all. So <laughs> So it is an app. Three ninety nine. On the on the what? on the Apple Store, I don't know about Google, but on the Apple Store, it's three ninety nine. On the Apple Store, that's awesome. Uh, I have an iPad. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> All right, and the third game I wanted to talk about is a reprint of a game called Starving Artists. Uh, this is a game about you're painting, you're trying to collect these different color cubes which represent different color paints, and you're p- trying to put these paints on certain portraits or you know pieces of art to complete them and then you're trying to sell them for money so you're not starving um this is coming out by at least one of the guys from zafty games they've done um pixel glory and a couple other games and this has 27 days to go and it's only 29 dollars, which i think is a pretty you know decent price point for a a kickstarter game so this is one i'm kind of interested in because i almost bought this at origins one year so i'm hoping to maybe get a review copy of this or at least play it at some point very cool uh it seems interesting but i think it's probably a pass for me uh i don't know i just man i've got so many games i need to play so it's got to be pretty exceptional for me to kick kickstart something at this point but like on mars was pretty exceptional i think that was the last one i did <sighs> and maybe the last one for this year that i do so yeah i yeah. i didn't back that one that one just seems like one i'm never going to ever get a play so right that's unfortunate and probably true like i bought root after our like after our episode where I felt really guilty, I was like, ah, I should buy Root and give it a shot. And that was like six weeks ago. Haven't played it yet. Here's even worse than that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and say it now. I have a copy of Wingspan like setting in my like breezeway that like has just been sitting there for a month and we haven't played it yet. And like right now someone punched their speaker and said, I want to <laughs> buy that game and own it. And you're sitting on it and not playing it. So yeah, that, that feels bad, I guess. But You can sell that for like a hundred bucks, man. I know. It's my wife's game, though. That's that's another running gag, kind of, is that, uh, <laughs> like, she bought a game for herself, which was a pretty big deal, honestly. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope it's good. Uh, we'll see if I get to play it in the next <laughs> month or something, but... <laughs> yeah, you'll get there sometime. It's it's the end of the school year. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I've mentioned that before. Um, so, it's amazing I own any games, honestly. I mean, the way how teachers are paid, kind of, but um, we both work, I guess, so that way I can afford, like, a game a month. Um Actually, that that's totally a lie. Teachers get paid decently for only working nine months of the year. So um, thank you for paying us, I guess, taxpayers. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the summertime, I get a lot of stuff played, and I get to do a lot of stuff. But, like, I've just not been feeling cardboard lately. I, I don't know. And I think everybody goes through these seasons where it's like you're obsessed with it, and all you can think about is the next time you're going to get a good game day. And that's, that's what Jason calls life. Um, and then like a lot of us just are like, man, it's a hobby that I really love. And like, I go through, I definitely go through phases. Like the, there's, there's one phase I've pushed out. I'm not into video games at all. Like I just don't play video games at all. I play League of Legends some, but like it used to be I'd rotate. Like I'd listen to records and clean records and like obsessively like have my record collection going. And then I played, then I played board games for like a month or two. And then like I'd play video games for a month. And like, that was all I did. Like, that's all I could think about and all I wanted to do. Like I was obsessed and board games have, have been like in there more lately but like i've been kind of in a lull so yeah that, that's a little foreshadowing for my what i've played uh segment coming up here but uh anyway all right so now let's talk about a few games that we played i haven't played as many of as i've been wanting to just because life's gotten in the way and i'm playing in a band yep. and the band has been sucking up some time but Yep. I'm trying to make sure that I can, you know, squeeze some games in. So the first game I want to talk about is from... Oh, Passive Aggressive. Ouch. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I'm just... I like playing games. I mean, one of the hosts is figuring out a way to play some games still. I'm just trying to make sure I get games in. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you, man. All right, so the... Is what I'll say on the mic, and when we <laughs> get done recording, I'll, I'll yell at you and make your ears hurt. <laughs> and I'll just close the window. It's fine. Uh... <laughs> We've got a regular Bert and Ernie abusive relationship going on here, don't we? Oh, uh, yeah. So the first game I'm, I'm going to talk about is the third game from the Facade from Facade Games. It's in their Secret Cities mm. or Dark Cities trilogy or something like that. And this game is called Deadwood 1867. 
So what you're doing in this game is each player is taking on the role of a person from the West. I think they're actual real historical people. I'm pretty sure. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to steal these safes that are in front of people to try to have the most gold in front of you before the last round. You're going to do this over four turns. Game's really fast. I think it plays in about 20 minutes. You're going to do this over four turns. Then you're going to take a turn. If you have a badge in your safe, you're going to take an additional bonus turn. But if you don't have a badge, you don't get that extra turn. And then based on whoever has this certain amount of gold at each location, there may be a final showdown where you're going to fight to the death and the last person alive is the winner. And all that's done through this cool card play where there's a top of the card is a weapon. You can play it as a weapon and you get to roll a die. The better the weapon, the better probability of hits on the die. Or you can use the card for the bottom, which is going to be, give you a special power. You're always going to have four cards and everybody's going to do the same thing four times. So it's an interesting, interesting little game. It's probably my least favorite of the three, actually. I think I like hmm. Tortuga, then Salem, and then this one, just because it's too fast and I didn't feel like I was doing anything, but still fun. And that's Deadwood 1867. I was going to ask you that, if this is as good as Salem or not, and no, it's not. Nope. So if I'm only going to buy one, you say get Salem, huh? No, I'd say Tortuga. I like Tortuga the best. Tortuga? Yep. So uh, if I already own a bunch of like little party filler, hidden roll kind of games, like should I get this? Um. Well, I wouldn't not get- Not Deadwood, but I, I mean, would you say get- Yes, I, I would. There's more game. It has actual game in it as opposed to some party filler stuff. So while you can play up to like, I think you can play 12 people in Tortuga, there's still actual game there and some decisions. So I would definitely say this over a party game for sure. So this these are the ones that look like books, right? Yeah. And like they don't have boards, but they have play mats in them sometimes. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's kind of a cool little package actually. Uh, huh. And definitely the- digging them. And good price points. Yeah. Yeah. 25 bucks, I think. And they're from my area. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, all right. Well, that's cool, man. Uh, you have bested me for sure on the cool stuff you've played this week because (laughs) I've only got one to talk about. So spoiler, when I talk about nothing later, it's not a game called nothing. It's, I have nothing to talk about. (laughs) Um, also just, uh, I listen, I was there too. I was there for the last segment. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to fix it. Okay. Um, there are these, there are these guitar tuners called snark tuners, which are like my favorite guitar tuners because they actually use like the vibrations from like the headstock of your guitar to like tune your guitar. Like, so it can be super loud in the room and like, it still just picks up your guitar and, uh, and they're like seven bucks and they're the best tuners ever. So, uh, this is the podcast inside the podcast called guitar tuner talk, um, where I'm (laughs) talking about that for a second, but on the top of the tuner, it says the word super tight. So I clipped this onto my mic stand so I can keep it super tight for the rest of the show. So let's see how I do on that. Uh, super (laughs) tight starting now. (sighs) Okay. Jason, I played Robinson Crusoe Escape from Despair Island. This is a delightful little game from old novel games in Finland. Um, does that sound super tight? Uh, <laughs> no, I, but is it, dude, re- I, is it really from Finland? Yeah. Oh, that's, I wanted to punch myself. That's like, awesome. Just, just, just <laughs> thinking about that uh, that little voice I was doing. So I'm done with that. Um, it's from it's from Finland, and it's I think I have like probably one of ten copies that exist. Um, and even in this prototype that he sent me... Um, Man, the card art is really good, and the card quality is really good. So I really like that. It comes in a cool little box. Um, and basically what you do in this game, um, I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about it, but I guess what are they going to do? Like, I don't know. They're not going to listen. <laughs> yeah. Are, are they going to – I mean, I guess they can come take away my podcasting license. I don't know. Um, and then the FCC will be like, no more podcasting for you. Uh. Um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's it's. I have a review of it, but I haven't been allowed to publish it yet because he wants to use it in his Kickstarter preview, which I think is coming up in a week, a week or, or a month or two. I think actually he he kind of alluded to the fact that he wants me to work on his rule book for him. So uh, I might do that when I have some time this summer. Again, school teacher summer off thing. Um, but uh, it's called Robinson Crusoe: Escape from Despair Island. And if this game comes out, like I don't know what the price point will be for it, but if it's like twenty bucks or under, I would probably suggest it. Um, it's it's a pretty cool little game. It's a unique combination of mechanics. It's like, um, it's push your luck because there's these whammy cards in there. And if you get to the whammy cards and you can't overcome them with like things that you have in your base camp, which I'll get to your base camp here in a second, you have to stop. You can't take a card from the cards you flipped over in the array of cards that you're flipping. Like you're flipping cards one at a time and there's good cards and there's bad cards. And if you get two of the bad cards, you don't get to take a card from there. Um, other people can buy cards from there. And then you kind of get a benefit from that, but 
you lose out. So that's the push your luck kind of part of it, which is kind of cool. Um, but then like, it's almost like drafting because it's like push your luck for how many cards you get to draft from, because then you get to take one card from there for free yourself to put in your base camp. And then everyone else around the table can look at the cards you flipped over and they can say, Oh, that looks kind of cool. I want to buy that card from you. I have to pay the food cost for that card plus pay you one food for like discovering that. So like you're making other people money off other people around the table by like letting them buy things from your market that you've created to draft from. So it's kind of a cool mechanic. Um, and then the cards actually go into a base camp and like you start off with things like rifles. And then if you have a rifle, there's a rifle symbol on some cards. Like, so certain kinds of food have a rifle symbol on them. And they say like, if you have the rifle in your camp, then you get to get this food and food's kind of the currency that you use to get everything. So um, basically you try and escape the Island is how you win by becoming a man of God developing a boat, uh, getting Friday to work with you, that, those kinds of things. So it's like kind of a cool like set collection meets drafting meets push your luck with kind of a cute little theme on it and really cute art. And actually, the more I think about this one, the more I really kind of like it. Um, the rules were kind of hard to get through because he's working on the rule book. And I think that, you know, English is a second language. So, um, but it's it's really well done and even in a prototype stage. So that was Robinson Crusoe, Escape from Despair Island. And uh, I, it's been fun doing a podcast after we lost our license. It was sad, but <laughs> I mean, this is a good way to go out. <laughs> yeah, the art in that game does look really cool. I watched the video that you have posted. Well, you haven't posted, but I watched it, and it does seem really neat. Yeah, I, I don't know how you. I don't. I guess you had the secret code, the cheat <laughs> codes, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I. I uh, I hope people understand the reference I made at the beginning when I have a <laughs> Settlers of Catan box with a Wilson volleyball face on it. But I mean, whatever. Yeah, I got it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> All right. So the next game I want to talk about that I played is an abstract game. And it is, was, maybe the hotness. I don't know. And it's called Onitama. I think it was hot at one point a couple years ago. And this is essentially like a chess sort of style game where you're trying to get your piece to the other players, like home space, or you're trying to take all of their pieces. And the interesting thing about this is there are five cards in the game. Each player has two cards face up, and there's a card to the side that when one of the players takes a turn, they're going to take the card to the side into their box to be able to use in a future turn. So you have all the perfect information. You can see what actions are going to be able to happen from each player. So it's going to help you adjust your movements accordingly, because if you see that you need to go straight and you can look at their piece, their cards and see that they can't go straight, then you know that you're safe. You can't be taken. So it's just one of those games where you're playing more about, you know, you're you're playing as much on the other person's turn as you're playing on your turn. And I kind of enjoyed it. And that's Onitama. Yeah, the uh, mayor of Review Town really loves this game. And it doesn't hurt that he kind of helped publish it. But that's, yeah. I think, why people loved it a lot. That's true. Um, it's fine. I uh, it's not fine. I don't like it. Um, it's not for me. And like, here's why it felt like when I was playing it, it was like, this is all the thinking power that I can make my brain do at one time. And like, not that fun even. So, I mean, like just trying to keep track of all the moves that can be made. And then like, if I remember right, don't the cards flip over, like you play them and then they flip. So like, there's two sides to each card kind of thing. Could be. We didn't, if I remember right. We didn't do that. So I don't know. I, it wasn't my game. I just played a buddies and it we didn't do that, so maybe we were supposed to do that, but we didn't. Yeah, because I, I think if I remember right, like I'm sure that someone will comment and let us know. We're at that point where, I mean, we had literally hundreds of people listen to the episode last week. So we're, we're definitely at the point where the fan base gets grumpy with us when we make a mistake like this. But I think <laughs> I think that like you, I think that you play a card, then you flip it over and put it down somewhere else. Or I might be thinking of another game or a variant of this game, but like. If I remember right, there were people that were playing this game that were like, I remember what the other side of that card is. I know it's going to cycle to them on three in three turns, and I'm thinking that far ahead. And I just can't do that. So, um, because I don't know if you guys have noticed. I mean, like, I assume you've listened to the episodes up to this point, or at least even this episode. I have really terrible ADD, and I cannot focus for crap. So, when I play board games, I lose a lot because I'm basically going with my intuition. I'm like, ah, oh, intuition feels like this is a good one. But I like the social aspects of playing games and stuff. And if I win, awesome. But... I don't hardly ever win, so whatever. Um, I felt like I could talk like that, Jason, because I my next game I played is called I Didn't Do Anything to Play a Game. I actually, <laughs> if you want to say I played a game, you could say I bought a car for 500 bucks, 
and I've been repairing it, uh. like, doing like little repairs to it. So that's been actually kind of fun to do, but it's been taking my extra time up. Um, I literally bought an Acura for 500 bucks and it's a pretty sweet car. And, uh, I got the I got the friends and family discount on it, but it's got a quarter of a million miles on it. And the game I'm kind of playing with it is see if I can make this car that I have no reason to own. Like I have a perfectly good, reliable car. This is another car that I own. See if I can make it go to a, a, a half million miles, like make it last another quarter million miles. And it probably won't happen because it needs a timing chain replaced on it. And that's the Onitama of car repairs. So I'm not sure I can do that. So anyway, yeah, that's true. But it is a stick. So you get to drive that for a while and have fun. Yeah, and then eventually it'll blow up, and I'll like tear the VIN number off of it, and be like, "Man, I was just walking down the side of the road, officer, and somebody like their car is right here. I don't know whose it is. <laughs> Pretty messed up. Uh, you think they would want to get like the junkyard money out of it, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, that'll give you a whopping fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty light car, maybe twenty five. <laughs> and then I'll buy a copy of Dutch Blitz. <laughs> yeah. Or Tortuga, $25. Good that's price. true. Tortuga, yeah. Well, that's enough of this silliness, I guess. Uh, let's let's get right into the meat. Okay, so uh, we may have done this topic before. We may not have. I, I don't... Have we? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe. But either way, we're going to talk about our favorite publishers. So I say we just go ahead and jump on into it. So I'm going to do... Three, two, one. So my third favorite, second favorite, first favorite. But this really, I mean, there are so many publishers that I like. So if I left one off that you think should be on here, it's fine. I like these three. So my first one that I wanted to talk about is Gray Fox. So the reason I picked them is because I have a pile of their games and I've played a ton of their games and I've liked most of them. So I have Seven Ronin. Champions of Midgard is amazing. Deception, which I know you're not a huge fan of, but... I enjoy it. Harvest Dice. I think you've played that one. I have not. Uh, London Dread is a really fun co-op game that's like timed for half of it. Order of the Gilded Compass, a cool like Yahtzee variant kind of. And then Rising 5 is one of my favorite co-op games. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty good catalog of games. And that's why they made my number three. Yeah, I think if I had to pick a company for how small they are to how awesome the games are they put out. Like, I don't think they're a huge company. Like, I feel like you named most of the games they have out, honestly. Um, but Champions of Midgard, and then I guess Reavers of Midgard coming out here a little bit. Um, but Champions is a great game. I love that game. Harvest Dice, like you said, I own it. It's a great roll and write. It's my favorite roll and write, probably. And then Rising 5 is just super good. Like, you suggested that one to me. And the the integration of technology on it is really awesome. Like, really love it. So, for sure... Uh, really good. Uh, nice pick. Uh, Jason, I didn't use science either. I just kind of did what felt good. And, uh, I have my default ringtone on if you heard that in the background. So, (laughs) um, so, uh, my number three, I guess, but these are all just excellent companies that could, it could go really in any order. Uh, my number three is uh, cool mini or not, or come on or Simon or whatever they're calling themselves this week, I think is what you said before, Jason. And I'll, I'll echo. They have an awesome selection of Euro games, man. Like they really do. Really good Euro games, like Newton, uh, Lorenzo, uh, Dogs of War, um, a bunch that I'm missing. But like, I mean, just a really good selection of Euro games. And then they have Blood Rage beyond that too. So, I mean, uh, just a really good selection of games there, all over the place. Uh, the Godfather, Corleone's Empire, which um, I've secured a copy of that, Jason. It'll be number six this year. Nice. So. Um, yeah, I mean, just a lot of really great games from them, and I know I'm missing a ton of their Euro games because, like, I just there's more, and they're games that I love, and I just am not remembering them off the top of my head. So, um, cool, me or not? Yeah, I almost well, spoiler, they're not on mine, but I almost put them on there just for the sheer fact that they have Lorenzo and Newton. I mean, that's amazing right there. Um, I guess I'll turn my ringtone down now. <laughs> um, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and jump into my number two. Um, my number two is a publisher that I, I'm not sure where they're from, but they do a lot of heavy games, like fairly heavy and they're called what's your game. Uh, I like and own most of their games. I haven't played all of them, but I've played majority. Uh, the games I have are Zhang Wo, Vasco da Gama, Vinos, Asgard, Signori. All those are great, 
the games I want to have are Madeira, Nippon, and Railroad Revolution, which I think you have. I do. And these games, like, they all look fantastic. They're all heavy and meaty. Some of them are a little lighter than others. Like, Signori's kind of light. Er, but still fun. So if you like heavy Euros, 100% Euros. I mean, these are nothing but Euro games. Then I say go check out What's Your Game, and they're my number two. Yeah, I uh, I really like these guys too. Um, Vasco da Gama, I didn't like. I had that game in a season of gaming where like it didn't feel right. It didn't feel good to me, um, and it felt just extra dry. And it was the theme was like the same old theme. And I don't think anyone can fight me on that one. Um, but it's probably better than I remember. Um, Vinos is great, and whenever I play Vinos, I play the edition that What's Your Game put out. And then I have Asgard. Um, a dear, dear, dear friend of mine gave me a really great deal on that. And uh, and the Railroad Revolution, just I traded for that. I haven't played it yet. Looks awesome. So I'm hoping for good things with that one. So good pick, Jason. Uh, my number two, Jason, based on just the game that I haven't played yet, but I just know it's going to end board gaming. Uh, Wingspan, um, <laughs> Stonemeyer Games is my number two. I mean, like, I mean, Wingspan, Wingspan, Wingspan. I mean, that's all I gotta say. All right, go on, Jason. Do your number one. Uh, yeah. I should I should give them a little more time than that because they have some other great games. Uh, Viticulture, awesome. Scythe, awesome. Between Two Castles of Mackie and Ludwig, one of the underrated ones. I think that's a pretty cool little game. Uh, it's a good meshing up of two cool games. Um, My Little Scythe, another good one. Uh, uh. Euphoria uh, is a really underrated game as well. Um, so a lot of really good games that they've put out. And then now, obviously, Wingspan, too. Um, and, and I hear they've got some really great games coming out this this coming year. Um, like, I basically am friends with some some playtesters. And they are very serious about their non-disclosure agreement, so they won't give me any details. But, like, using facial expressions and what they can do, they've told me there's some really great stuff coming from Stonemaier yet this year. So... We will see what happens. Uh, yeah, awesome. Now my computer's making noise. Uh, this is the a fun, fun <laughs> sound. Okay, I'm just gonna get the corny sound machine out and just start making all kinds of noises because why not? <laughs> so still my games. That's the applause for them, I guess. That is a lot longer than I remember it being. <laughs> uh, everything they've done is really good. So still my. Yeah, they are good. I only have like three of their games, and I don't, I don't like them as much as a lot of other people, but definitely a good, solid publisher. All right, so my number one, uh, we'll go ahead and jump into that, and that is a company that produces pretty good Euros, not super heavy, mostly like midweight, heavy midweight, uh, and they are called Eggertspiel. They are partnering with uh, Plan B now, I think. Too, for American distribution. And some of the games that I put on this list that make me really like this company, one, they make my number one game of all time, and that's Coimbra. So that right there earns them a spot on the list. They also do Blackout Hong Kong, which is really fun in my opinion. Rococo, which I love and wish it would come back in print. Great Western Trail, which is okay. That's two feaster games. Uh, Heaven and Ale. And Mombasa, three Feaster games. So they must like Alexander Feaster a little bit. So yeah, my number one, Eggerspiel, good, medium, light, heavy games. Medium, lower level, heavy games. Cool. Uh, Jason, I, I like what you said there. Um, I don't have much else to say uh, because my number one is Eggerspiel also. Um, everything you just said, I uh, love Blackout Hong Kong. I think I'll like Rococo when I finally play it. Uh, Quimbra, Quimbra, however you want to say it, uh, is a pretty good game. I don't like it as much as Jason, but I do love Great Western Trail much more than Jason does. Heaven and Ale is a really fantastic game, too. I've not played that with anybody who doesn't think that game's really, really excellent. Um, and then they've got some other stuff, too, like that, uh, is pretty great, too, like Village. Uh, that's a really good game as well. Um, and then Camel Up. I think it is officially Camel Up now, right? Since the second edition came out and yep, yep. cleared things up. Uh, so, I mean, that's a great one. And then, uh, like, way lesser known game, like, that doesn't even really have, like, the Fox on it is a game that I own, and I didn't realize it was Eggerspiel until, like, the other day. It's called Power Struggle, and it's about being a corrupt business person. And that's actually a decent game, um, that I got on a really good deal. I could have made my good deals games, uh, like last week. I got it for, like, seven bucks at one of those, like, bargain hunt type places. So, um, really excellent games. Everything they do gets my attention for sure. Especially since Plan B has bought them out or merged with them or whatever happened there. Because, I mean, like, they just get that extra high level of design and production. So if it's got that new sleek looking fox on it, 
you know it's going to be real good. So, um, and even if it has the other Fox on it, I'd say it's worth playing at least once because they just put out some good stuff. I mean, the Spicker stat, even that was that was Eggert Spiel. So, I mean, like uh, back when Z-Man was putting all those games out here in the United States. So, um, anyway, uh, Eggert Spiel, great choice, Jason, and that's why I copied it. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, so, what just off the top of your head? What are a few other publishers that you kind of enjoy that have good games? It's weird to say this because they don't really develop their own games. They buy other people's games and put them out for these two companies. I mean, like they I don't think they've developed any games. Um, but that's Stronghold. And Stronghold brings some really good games to the United States. And it used to be a lot of the Eggert Spiel games were from Stronghold put them out over here. Um, and then, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. They just, and then I guess Fryaxis games made terraforming mars but then stronghold made terry uh, stronghold made terraforming mars what it is and i guess maybe the great designer series is all the original offerings maybe i guess i can't confirm or deny that but uh, no i can i can deny that because i think that maybe great western trail wasn't in their great designer series but like that one's an aggregate spiel that, that the stronghold put out over here too so it's kind of a weird pick but they put out some really good games and they get ragged all the time for their components being bad that's that's based almost entirely on one game, Terraforming Mars, and the components are bad in that. But like, I don't think they do the development of the production and stuff. I think they just kind of are like, we're going to distribute it in the United States, take the risk on that, and then put our logo on it. So um, it's kind of hard to give them an award for that, like on the top spot or anything like that for like board game developers I love. But they definitely do some good work. Um, the other one that's kind of like that too is Rio Grande, which Rio Grande basically is notorious or noteworthy for um, doing Carcassonne originally, and then it went to Z-Man, and it might be someone else now even. Um, but then also they had Dominion, was something that they brought to the United States. Um, and then they have a bunch of just games that I really enjoy, like uh, Race for the Galaxy, Roll for the Galaxy, um, uh, Airlines Europe, which I've talked about a bunch, is a game that's really great that's that they put out in the States. Um, but I think, again, they're another one that buys the rights and publishes things, distributes things in the United States. So um, that's another one that I kind of like. Um, I don't know. There's there's definitely more. I mean, like, I kind of I kind of joked about TMG earlier. They actually kind of have some awesome games. AEG has some awesome games. Um, Z-Man. I mean, Z-Man's kind of off their A game that they were at at one time, but they were a big player at one point, too. So. And Yellow, like, I can't lie yellow makes adorable little good games so um i don't know what else who am i missing jason that deserves a shout out i think you're missing tree frog sir i am and then what's the new company osprey games is that what it's called osprey games osprey that, yeah that put out a couple of the newer uh martin walls games um yeah, yeah and, oh I mean, roxley what about roxley yeah roxley's up and coming big time um for sure i mean like their last three or four offerings have been amazing so and I won't get them confused with Spin Masters this time. Um, <laughs> but even even Spin Masters is kind of putting some okay stuff out. I think Spin Masters might have done Hail Hydra. And that's a pretty awesome game. So, yeah. That's, in, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, noteworthy exceptions from our list. People that we don't care for. I like Days of Wonder just fine, too. They're just kind of... The games are getting a little light for me, honestly. Um, yeah. I feel like they've uh, focused more on production and less on gameplay. Yeah. I mean, like... Uh, Yamatai was perfectly okay. Five Tribes was pretty good. Five Tribes um, is awesome. But, like, they, uh, they, I don't know. I, I mean, like, I, I kind of guess uh, they haven't, they haven't been, like, they were the company for a while for, like, this game's going to be a mainstream, like, actually get attention to the mainstream kind of game. Like, Ticket to Ride, you know? I mean, like, that was everywhere. So, um, they haven't put out a Ticket to Ride, but I guess it's like a once in 50 years game. So, um, I don't know. Right. It's hard to match that. Uh, I, I'll let's give let's give Renegade a shout too. Oh yeah, Renegade's great. R and R actually even too. Like R and R games, like they do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I don't think I have any of their games, but they do have some interesting little little games that they do. Well, I mean, like they do stuff really cheap. Like that's the big thing, and I think that's true. Isn't Rajas of the Ganges R and R? I'm thinking it is. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. It is. Yeah. And and then uh, Home Stretch, but like Rajas of the Ganges, like I remember when it came out, I was like, this box is heavy. And it's hard to close with all the components in there. And it was like 30 bucks. Yeah. And that was like at a cheap. local shop. So, I mean, like r is doing some good stuff cheap. Um, Plan B, you mentioned them kind of already. They do some really great like family weight, lighter f- type games. Um, Daily Magic, I actually kind of like them. They're kind of an up and coming company a little bit. Yeah. I think R&R has the American distribution for Hook or Huck, however you say it. Huh. 
because um, I'm looking at Raja's right now, and it has the H U C H exclamation mark oh, on, yeah, the, yeah, on the box. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I also had Ohm, which is that same company that's also R and R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put out some good games, man. I, that that company is pretty so- solid. Yep. Um, uh, uh, like rookie of the year company for me. Um, and I think this one's gonna be like a little meh for you, but I really like both the games that I played of theirs. Um, like really like them, and that's Forbidden Games. Um, but you, I mean, you played Railroad Rivals, and you can see where that's right in my ballywick. Like that's the yeah. kind of games I love. So I mean, like, and I didn't hate it. Games, I just didn't love it. Their production value is insane too. I mean, that's for like true. what they do. So yeah, uh, yeah. And noteworthy exceptions, definitely there. I don't think we need to name them, but there's some big companies that we definitely didn't mention because I think we're kind of over their shenanigans. So, yep, yeah, we'll let we'll let you fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, Upper Deck. That's an interesting one because they made some really great 1989 Ken Griffey Junior cards, uh, they and now did. they're making some good Bring Out Your Dead games. So that's true. I do like that game a lot. Yeah, and then the like the like uh, legendary type games like oh that's uh, true the the X Files one I want to play that at some point I haven't got a chance yet too but yeah well cool uh, I think we did better this week Jason I'm not sure that we broke that pretty okay barrier yet but I feel like it wasn't as bad as other times <laughs> yeah I mean again low bar <laughs> yeah I mean like we got sent to the minors we we I mean we can't hit a curveball and they figured that out we struck out a lot and. Now we're trying to get our game back, so we'll see if we can do that. Yeah, I should have prayed to Joe Boo before we started. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Major League, man. Major yeah, League. Oh, yeah, I got you. Ricky Williams, man. <laughs> Wild thing. Uh, it was Ricky Vaughn in the movie. But yeah, Rick, Rick Vaughn, Ricky Vaughn, yeah. Rick, 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 like Ricky Williams was, uh, uh, no, Mitch Williams was the, I combined the two guys together. Mitch Williams was Wild Thing on the Cubs. He was an actual pitcher. The oh. boys, of Zim- boys of Zimmer, 1989. Um all right. Well, uh, I think we should just end the uh, podcast now with a, a brief moment um, of silence, remembering the Columbus Blue Jacket fans who will miss Breadman and Bob next year when they don't resign. Yeah. If you're the one person listening to the show who understands what I just said, I want you to at me because I want to know you better. <laughs> All right. Moment of silence. Moment over. of silence, dude. Shut up. <laughs> All right, I'm a Joel and keep gaming or whatever. <laughs> that makes for good radio. Yeah, I'm Jason. Keep gaming. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Hey, think about how well you're going to be able to run noise reduction on this now. So <laughs> That's true. Uh, All right. Hey, this is a fun episode, and keep gaming still. Yep, see ya. We'll see you next week if we don't lose our license. <laughs> <laughs>